Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Magic Bricks webinar series. Our endeavor is to trigger a buy and bring back consumer confidence in the real estate market. We have initiated a series of webinar conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of real estate industry. The topic of today's session is citizens' participation in environment and policy planning for smart cities. Our guest speaker for today is Ashwini Kumar, environmental sustainability expert and associate professor at Faculty of Planning, CEPT University, Ahmedabad. Ashwini Kumar is an environmental sustainability expert having varied experiences of more than 15 years as environmental regulator, researcher and accommodation. He holds the degree in civil engineer from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur and master in planning. He is a recognized green buildings evaluator. He started his career with the National Environmental Regulator, Central Pollution Control Board, Delhi, as environmental engineer, where his work domain included policy formulation and implementation, regulatory compliance and information dissemination, environmental clearances and tackled issues such as hazardous, waste management, environmental infrastructure, environmentally sound recycling, siting of industries, industry, industrial estate planning, etc. He also managed a part of World Bank funded environmental management capacity building technical assistance project. Later, he joined CEPT University Ahmedabad as associate professor at faculty of planning where he teaches subjects namely environmental planning and science, urban environment management, environmental infrastructure and services, environmental in impact assessment, cities and climate change, special environmental planning. His recent focus is on climate change and sustainability research. I also welcome Neha Nagpal. She is a senior journalist working with Magic Bricks. She has an experience of over 10 years. She has been associated with and has written about real estate industry for over 7 years and has written about other industries such as franchising and outdoors. We will start the session with the presentation. Over to you Neha. Yeah, thank you, Bushpa. Uh, I welcome uh, Mr. Ashwini Kumar uh, on the board today. Um, the topic of today's session is uh, citizens' participation in environment and policy planning for smart cities. As we all know, smart city is a buzzword, you know, uh, these days. Uh, Mr. Kumar, without any further delay, I uh, would like you to start your presentation uh, uh, now, and then we will take up the live queries post that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank magicbricks.com for giving me the opportunity to share my thought on one of the important topic and emerging agenda of smart city today. And also to discuss and present my thought that how the citizens participation has taken place as part of the smart city program. I will be talking in context of the environment and how does the planning policy has been also accommodated in a smart city through the citizens engagement. Uh, having said so, I will whatever I am discussing in today's presentation, actually my personal thought, it does not represent in any manner my institutional philosophy as such. Uh, at the outset, or uh, I would also like to uh, have an outline. Yeah, just um, yeah, the outline of my presentation, uh, which will include in terms of. Uh, Urban agenda, I will be very briefly discussing about the urban agenda, how the cities are facing different issues. I will be also talking about the cities and the environment concerns. Then I will be coming to the for the point on the discussion on smart cities, what exactly that smart city initiatives and how the citizens participation has been accommodated as a part of smart cities program. And then in latter part of that, I will take up questions from you. If you see in general, the cities in India or in a developing world are called as engines of the economic growth. Reason being because more, around 70 to 80 percent of the economic activities including manufacturing as well as service sector are happening in the cities worldwide as well as in India. Uh, in terms of the population, we have around 37 percent of the population, Indian population living in the cities in, in the urban area and we expect by the mid of this century more than 50 percent population will be living here. That means almost like a 50% increase in terms of population and in terms of the sizes, we expect that cities will require to get uh, doubling in terms of their area. Once we talk about the area, the another important and crucial point emerges is the scarcity of the land. 
while large number of the population is dependent on the primary activity, hence agriculture land is one of the important agenda in front of us which we need to take care. Hence the land scarcity for the urban development of cities is going to remain a crucial issue. On the other side, each of the city in India today are going towards a, not only the seeking investment from the national as well as state authorities and the government, they are looking for the international investment, they are trying to make themselves as a business friendly cities, they are trying to highlight themselves as a sustainable city and actually they are getting as a peer linkages to the global cities. Having said so, but our cities are not free from the issues and challenges. There are several issues and challenges in front of our cities. They are ranging from the managing the growth, whether it is urbanization, large number of population who is shifting to the cities and migrating to the cities and around 15 to 25 percent or maybe more than 35 percent population in the cities which are living in the slums which is very hygienic conditions. Infrastructure in the cities is also in a crippling stage or have not received good investment in last it's, uh, several decades and there is a lack of revenue uh, for the infrastructure. Local bodies do not have a credit worthiness so that they can have a bankable projects with them. Critical infrastructure is in immense, you can say, mess as well as we have fallen short of that. There is a deficiency in the services and so on. In terms of the service delivery, we all understand the kind of issues we face whenever we go to the local bodies to get some kind of services. This is not for the every city, but most of the cities are having these kind of challenges. Uh, then in terms of the housing, as well as more importantly, the planning and governance uh, part of the same. Uh, coming to the more important part and which is my own focus is on the urban environment. Hello. Hello. Please, Hello. Uh, Kumar, please carry on. Please carry on. I, I got some signals. I thought this may be giving some problem. Yeah. No, no. Second, yeah, you're quite audible to all of us. Please carry yeah, on. Second section of my presentation will talk about the urban environment issues and trying to understand urban environment in our context. While our cities are expanding, they are requiring and they are expanding almost 20 to 25 percent in terms of the population and also at something like a 10 to 15 percent of the area in every 10, 10 years in a decade. We are also uh, <coughs> we are also finding it difficult in terms of understanding and managing the environment. If we see, look into the urban environment, we can conceptualize it as a part of the resources and processes taking around us and the effect of these processes on the cities as well as effect of the cities activities on the resources. This is a two-way interaction the urban environment as well as cities uh, do have uh, existing. But more concretely, we can understand urban environment in three different domains. One of the domain is natural environment, which talks about the biodiversity, ecosystem, ecology, all the vegetation and tree cover, water bodies, and everything we see around us. There's a strong component of the built environment. This is what we built. This is where the real estate uh, sector comes in, in, in a play. And they are make, these includes our road, buildings, infrastructure, and everything what we see, whatever human has built up. Third important component is the socio-economic environment, which includes equitability, livability, sustainability, as well as social cohesion in the cities. So this all together define whether the urban environment is in good condition and shape or not. Going further, in case if you are not able to take care of these uh, components, there are several challenges and also there is a severe cost. So the cities which have faced some problem or the other, basically related to the environmental concerns, are listed here. They are like a Bhopal gas density. So either the cities have got, or citizens of the, these particular cities have got affected directly, like on a Bhopal gas density where people have been, uh, you can say, suffered, or indirectly where the name of the cities have got such a uh, reputation that investment has got down. So these are all cases which represent some problem or the other where we could not able to balance development and environment and hence we took a high cost. We, we need to avoid such kind of issues in future uh, urban uh, expansions. It is not only the cost directly which comes, there are several national legislation policies as well as 
national international commitment the country has gone the country has already taken upon which need to uh, account for while cities are being planned for example the national commit commitment we have a total sanitation campaign so by 2019 we wish to clean some of the major indian rivers housing for all scheme csr which is expected to include the slum redevelopment now emerging the smart city concept on which we are going to discuss today as well as clean energy uh, agenda this all is our are our national commitments going ahead there is another international uh, agenda which is emerging or already has been committed by india also that is on the sustainable development goal out of the 15, 17 goals seven of the goals directly indirectly connect us to the environment uh, now if we try to imagine any project which is of the urban or the industrial de development nature there are certain environmental regulation which are going to have some implication on these projects before the project comes or after the project is uh, established in case of the urban industrial or infrastructure projects involving some area development they needs a environment clearance under the environmental impact assessment act 2006 amended 2009 similarly if there is a industrial projects they in addition to environmental impact assessment they also have to take care of the other regulation like air act water act hazard waste act noise pollution etc in context of the cities we are we all want to have a good quality of infrastructure and services but these infrastructure and services are also need to conform to the certain standards and these standards are also evolved under the environmental regulation for example drinking water quality standards are also part of the environmental standards urban waste water disposal quality municipal solid waste management rules plastic waste management rules and e waste management rules noise rules these all are applicable to the cities and various operation of the municipal corporation over the period in last 2 20 30 years various cities all over all over globe has adopted a different perspective but in common all of them has a something of the other uh, in their mind approaching towards the sustainable city concept and this this concept whether it is eco city concept healthy city safe city or a smart city concept now they all target to achieve the sustainable city uh, in long run coming to our core agenda of the day which focus on that smart city uh, that smart city concept the way the policy has been evolved last one year in 2015 it says in it starts from the from the dialogue saying there is no universally accepted definition of the smart city that means it is it means different things to the different people and when we say that different people means citizens of the these cities they need to be engaged they need to be engaged and they need to be uh, discussed in order to define what kind of smart city they want the second important crucial policy or you can say vision that this particular uh, agenda has taken talks about the imagination of the city dwellers it says that smart city is nothing but a imagination of the city dwellers in form of a wish list what their aspirations are in terms of the infrastructure and services so this is the second important point where strong citizens engagement and citizens participation is and we saw third important point is to identify and not only to remain limited to pre preparing a list of infrastructure and services rather it extend itself to accommodate or to demonstrate it through a model or to to construct a small area something like a 50 to 100 hectare area as a pilot project here this particular project can can be a flag bearer for the other cities and other areas to showcase that how the smart city concept can be taken forward the smart city concept is broadly divided or broadly progress to the four different stages starting from the concept and the perspective asked from the different state governments second stage which is recently completed is the on smart city challenge where the cities have been asked to prepare their own proposals third stage where cities have been shortlisted so out of the 100 cities 98 cities basically which was initially at the stage 1 now we have a 20 cities which have been shortlisted and these cities will be going to the stage 4 and final stage which is preparation of the city smart city act plans and implementation and monitoring this slide shows in detail what the what the different stages of the smart city i will quickly skip and go to the actual uh, solutions which have been envisaged under this particular smart city concept the smart city concept 
basically focus and also give our right or you can say very strong uh, importance to the e-governance and citizen serv services through the digitization and digital applications uh, in a city-wide as well as service-wide. So most of the services we expect from the municipal corporation or municip uh, municipality and from the other uh, government agencies can be deliver delivered through the electronic media or through the uh, e-governance models. That's what is a, one of the core strengths of this particular smart uh, solutions. Second one is talk about the waste management, looking at the waste to energy so that we can extract the energy and we can optimize the energy use. Waste to compost, which, which talks about the 3R or recycle reuse kind of concept. And, and also the water management, it says that optimizing the use of water, conserving the water to the right metering, identification of the leakages so that non-revenue water can be minimized. Managing the energy, the energy wastage is one of the crucial agenda a crucial issue is a lot of cities in, a, in our home and also to look into the green building concept as a part of the energy management. Another important and fifth important point which smart solutions are uh, including in overall platter is on urban mobility to look into the how the intelligent traffic management system can be put in place, how come the parking can be improved so that we don't have much encroachment on the road and there's a right place, the right time the parkings are being managed and also the integrated multimodal transport and there are several other kind of uh, programs. Typically if we say that this uh, smart city concept promotes mixed land use, it also promotes the housing and inclusiveness so that everybody gets a house to live and shelter, creating a walkable localities and the neighborhood. It also talks about the preserving and developing the open space and green space in terms of the park garden and vegetative covers, promoting the different type of transport options uh, and integrating them together. It talks about the citizens friendly and cost effective way of managing the services. It also talks about giving the identity to the city. What the city is, what is the USP of a city? How does this one city is, is more competitive or can highlight its own presence among the, uh, among the uh, whole lot of the cities present there and also the various smart solution as I have mentioned in the previous slide. The third important section which I would like to discuss with you is a how, in what manner, in what way the citizens participation has been uh, taken up as a part of the smart city program. I tried to look into the different stages of the smart city guidelines which has been given by the MUD and stage wise what kind of citizens participation has been envisaged today. So this slide presents my own perspective. It, uh, what I try to understand that at each stage, in what manner the citizen participation is likely to uh, be included. At the first stage, where around 98 uh, cities have been shortlisted or have been uh, listed by the central government based on the perspective of the state governments. At this stage, uh, at this particular stage, citizens' consultation and participation was a, was a limited because Cities, city or city need to be identified as states and state did not have a sufficient uh, wider uh, you can say perspective to carry out the consultation and also the sufficient time was not available probably. The second stage which was a smart city challenge stage which has completed in December and uh, cities submitted their proposal, all 98 cities have submitted their proposal and in phase wise or you can say round one we have selected 20 cities. In a stage two this citizen's consultation at a local level has taken place. It, it, it has been prioritizing the smart solution among the various smart solutions, which of them is to be taken up on the priority. And also it also helped to identify a small area for the pilot project. That was a stage two, that is a smart city challenge. Now coming to the shortlisted city, the, while these proposals have been submitted, again the central government has taken the stakeholders here in terms of shortlisting 20 cities for the phase one. Although the rest of the cities will be taken up for the phase two and phase three, but these 20 cities now need to go to the stage four to, of the preparation of the smart plan. What is expected at a smart city plan, smart city plan stage, there's a visioning exercise where the citizens will be consulted. Also in terms of detailing out of the smart solutions, which they have shortlisted in a stage two. And then also to identify and making a detailed plan to the stage of the tendering in terms of the identified area or identified pilot, pilot project. 
the last stage which is now construction, execution as well as implementation and monitoring. In this stage, there is a three-step monitoring which has been envisaged under the smart city program, but is a national level, second is a state and you can say state government level and third is a local level. Because these programs are supposed to be executed at the uh, level of the local in form of the special purpose vehicle and these special purpose vehicle will have to will have to promote a kind of smart city advisory forum. This smart city advisory forum will again accommodate citizens perspective through making uh, NGOs, women's groups, taxpayers association, youth association and the other experts as its member. And this particular group, smart city advisory group will also monitor the implementation and will provide feedback for the any corrective measures to be taken up in city development. Uh, this particular city part, the citizens participation has taken place by two of the means, that is online as well as offline tools. Online tools included the e-newspapers, TV, radio, radio as well as social media. Surveys, query and polls were conducted online and feedbacks were obtained in huge numbers. Apart from that, offline tools, traditional offline tools were also used. That is a newspaper prints, poster banners, stakeholder discussion, women trade and public associations and distribution of pamphlet for seeking the participation. What emerged out of that, or key feature which emerged out of this whole citizens participation program which has happened across all these 98 cities is something is a, a eye opener for us. So you can say it is one of the very successful in terms of the number and volume. This is one of the widest consultation done under any single national or state level program which accommodates something in a range of 15 to 25 percent of the city population. There are cities where more than 6 lakhs people or 6 lakh citizens who have participated in consultation. <coughs> Second important key feature is it used the structured and standardized questions and options. Hence, there is a vagueness in terms of uh, something which is not understandable at a national level or the state level was removed. Another important point is it is one of the fastest process of consultation and feedback. Huge number of consultation was done within a period of one to two months. It also helped us in generating a very big data. The data of the of the scale which we cannot imagine except the, except the census. So it is I think one of the largest one after the census operations. And it also helped us bringing the some sense of the social engagement among the citizens and creating the competitions for competition for the self-improvement. So in spite whether the city has uh, found its place in a first phase or not, a first round or not, the cities and citizens started looking their own activities in more insightful manner. That was a key feature of this one. However, having said so, it doesn't mean this was a one of the, uh, nothing more need to be improved. There are several areas which has a key issues and challenges in front of us which need to be addressed appropriately in a future citizen participation program, whether it's a part of the smart city or any other program. One of them is also this particular citizen's participation as it was done through the standardized uh, options, it missed out somewhere or the other specific potential of the cities. A particular city who is located in Himalayas maybe have a tourist potential as compared to another city which is maybe having a religious or having a business potential. This kind of potential need to be brought out at somewhere at a citizen participation uh, level. It also lacks or it also need to improve upon to bring the new idea and flexibility in options because one, one option doesn't fit to all. So in that case we need to have a bit flexible also to promote innovative ideas generating from the bottom of, bottom of the pyramid. Uh, also with, because it generated a huge amount of data, there is also need to cleaning up of this data in order to generate and understand response of the people in context of their socio-economic conditions. That is important because if, if we try to segregate it, probably the different perspective may emerge. The low income group as well as high income group, a particular target group in a city will have a particular demand which all need to be uh, addressed. Also, also it is important to balance perspective among the different target groups, otherwise this will, this will generate a kind of risk of bias within whole perspective uh, uh, of the city. Apart from this, another thing which has somewhere I find missed out or not rightly or you can say adequately addressed was 
uh, outreaching to the digitally marginalized communities and groups such as old people, women, homeless, slum dwellers, poor and children. Because there was a big uh, focus on the digital and online online approach and tools, somewhere we have missed out some perspective coming out of these target groups. And it also uh, it also kind of uh, uh, need need to improve upon for generating a responsible, fair and just citizen-centric monitoring group. So that this monitoring group through some of the programs can keep on engaging for the long, long period and it's not only creating a wish list for the smart city. I think I complete here my perspective on the uh, topic and I would request now if any one of you have questions. My presentation is basically based on the three or four major differences which I'm highlighting here. And I'm also leaving my presentation with a magic list of form. Thank you. Thank you for your patient hearing. And uh, I will take up a question if there is any now. Thank you. Right. Uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, it was a, quite an insightful presentation from your end. Uh, well, uh, before I just start taking up the queries, I was just reading about the consumer expectations uh, when we talk about the smart cities, actually. Uh, so for uh, uh, for consumers, the expectations are very clear. You know, they want for smart cities, they want 24 uh, into 7 supply of power and water. They want effective waste collection and disposable system. They want efficient public transportation, good air quality, citizen-oriented governance, smart policing, uh, uh, and very uh, low crime rate, disaster and emergency readiness infrastructure. Over 75% planned housing and roads, availability of jobs, good education, health, recreation infrastructure. The expectations are very clear. What I actually would like to ask, and one of our users yeah. is also uh, has asked her, uh, she's from Meena, she's, a mean, she's Meena and she's from Gurgaon. She's, she's asking, how can citizens be part of environment and policy making for smart cities in India? Citizens being part of? I missed listening some How can citizens be a question? part of environment and policy making for smart cities in India? Hello. Mr. Hello. Kumar, can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, I can hear. Please repeat the question. How can citizens be a Hello. part of environment? How Hello. can citizens be a... Mr. Kumar, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear, but it is still flickering. Let me read out the query, environment and policy making for smart cities in India. Uh, yeah, uh, citizens actually are, if, if you see that what you have mentioned as a consumer's wish list, there's a huge, it is diagnostic. It's like a, uh, whatever we have exposed to last 20 years of our globalization, we envisage to reach to some something like a good quality of life with a livelihood, with a kind of job opportunity, with a good and world class infrastructure and all that. Uh, on the other side, if we see that citizens need to be awakened, they need to participate in terms of bringing issues, bringing their perspective, their own perspective, and not only the perspective, a solution. A solution is not a solution which is an engineering and top-down solution. There are a lot of solutions which also can be promoted, bottom-up kind of approach. A problem especially in terms of, of the environment aspect, if I talk about, can be also solved or can be also addressed to the large extent if we look that problem at a neighborhood level or even at a household level. For example, the solid waste management. The biggest issue in solid waste management is the segregation of waste. All further processing is bankable. All further processing is possible to done. But segregation at a local level is one of the crucial issue. And wherever this this segregation of solid waste at a local level has been achieved, whole system of solid waste is functioning quite well. So what I mean to say is citizens' participation is not only to give the wish list, it is also to give or bring forward the solutions and so also the commitment, commitment together with us, with the local authority and the municipality that both together how they can solve the issue which otherwise requires a huge infrastructure, huge engineering uh, uh, you can say engineering systems which are going to cost and ultimately this cost is coming back to the citizens themselves in terms of the either property tax or in terms of their real estate prices. So this again comes back to them. Uh, second thing is also if we see the citizens or all, all cities, we as the citizens are looking for value in our investment. If we are investing in a house, 
if we are investing at a location, we expect a, a decent return. But these decent returns are certainly uh, possible if the environment in general is maintained around. If the environment is becomes unhygienic, I'm sure the real estate uh, value of the place or investment of a citizen also goes down. So I think it's not only the government which uh, gets a wish list. There is certain kind of joining hand together. That's what we call it the participatory approach or citizen engagement. It is two way uh, tying the hands of both local authority and citizens together to create a better livable and sustainable hygienic uh, condition in the city. I hope I could answer this particular right. question. Right. Certainly, certainly, sir. Uh, so, do you agree that citizen, you know, should have been consulted uh, in selection Hello. of smart cities and must be? Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. I can hear. Yeah. But, sir, do you agree? Do you agree that uh, citizens should have been consulted in selection of smart cities and should be involved in the selection of or the ratings uh, and the evaluation of Swachh Bharat or Amrut and smart city initiatives for this city? Uh, as I also mentioned, probably at a stage of uh, finalizing cities and you can say at the first stage we are number, around 90 cities have been selected. Uh, that actually was left or that somehow I was given, that responsibility was given to the state government and actually it is I think uh, uh, also good because if we see uh, in terms of the cities coming from the different places probably probably everybody will not be knowing about the cities located elsewhere. So in that process the state government was in a better position to mobilize and bring out some perspective. I, although I will agree that that may not be a perfect method, but that's a way I think uh, we can take it further. However, what I feel that in terms of flexibility, there is maybe a kind of some cities which need to be, uh, you can say, accommodate based on some kind of uh, emerging ideas or citizens perspective. The another important thing in our our case is we do not have sufficient citizens forum. So even if we talk about within a city, this is millions of the people or thousands of the people vis-a-vis -vis municipal authority. We do not have or we do not have organized citizen forum within the cities in terms of the area, in terms of the ward wise uh, citizens group or something like that. If that that is existing, it would have been best to uh, accommodate everybody's perspective. Could I able to answer? Right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, let me just take up the next query. Uh, the query is from Shreya. She is from Delhi. Uh, she is saying, is the central government seeking technocratic solutions to Indian's urban problem through smart cities? Uh, the question or you can say the shares question is very uh, apt it is very right question and also I think answer is largely goes towards yes direction rather than no because if we see that list of the typical features or list of the smart solution which have been promoted they have a very you can say approach behind them however we also have to understand that today's in our life is also you can say uh, entangled or in a way it is also uh, driven by the technology solutions whether it is talk, we talks about the mobile phone or whether we talks about the transport systems so these are all other engineering system but yes I do agree these systems need to be customized we should not implement technological solution just as they exist elsewhere in India or anywhere in other countries we need to customize we need to see that how our, our uh, different stakeholders and consumers are going to take it whether our women are feeling safe in that one, old people are able to perform, children are able to use those systems. This is where I think we need to modify technology to suit our the social and economic conditions. This is what I can say. But otherwise the solutions which were suggested are a quite a strong component of technology behind them. Right. Uh, a query from Jenny, yeah. uh, she's asking, what kind of smart solutions help in building infrastructure in the country? Uh, I couldn't listen the question fully. Can you please repeat on it again, Neha? Let me just, sure. Let me just repeat that for you, sir. Uh, what kind of smart solutions Hello. help in building infrastructure Hello, Neha, in the country? The question? I couldn't hear. Please repeat again. Uh, 
Mr. Kumar, am I audible to you? Yeah, now it is audible. Okay. Uh, what kind of smart solutions help yeah. in building infrastructure in the country? I can't hear. It's like getting deviated. I can lis listen only few words. Um, okay, let me just take the uh, next query in this case, sir. Uh, it's Rahul from Noida. He is asking how successful the Smart Cities mission will be in terms of sustainable development. Ha! This is one of the I think is uh, <laughs> question which also puts uh, uh, something we difficult to visualize right at this stage. Why I'm saying there's a there's a lot of positive outlook because as I mentioned. This is also following one of the type of uh, sustainable cities solution uh, or sustainable cities perspective. Although there is a no, you can say absolute sustainability is a just a misnomer, some type of vision. If we look into the cities which are actual in reality are performing. The water supply transportation which is consuming the fuels, energy system, electricity, buildings, they all are consuming the resources, even land as a resources. If these are performing good, if they are performing in a most efficient manner, saving environmental resources is one of the big gain for the sustainability component. Second one is also because we do not want to sacrifice the growth, economic growth of the cities as well as country or state. Hence, the cities which are going to have 70 to 80 percent of the economic contribution in a region, they will be accommodating with a most efficient system. I think this will be building up a second important sustainability uh, aspect of that. And third is also if we look into the br brighter side of the economic or affluence, most of the places worldwide, this is also proved that as the affluence increases, people become more cautious and more sensitive towards the sustainability and environmental issues. And hence I find that if this technology driven, in spite being a technology driven solutions which are in plenty in smart cities program, if they are implemented well, monitored and managed and that too with the engagement of the citizens, it will build up a large, uh, you can say, sustainability in overall system. So I am quite positive about this whole smart cities program. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. Right. Um, uh, another query from Nisha Sharma, she's from Bangalore. She's saying, uh, what role is the ICT going to play in implementing the smart city mission in India? Uh, Who is going to play the role? Agency name? ICT. Oh, so ICT. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Yeah, Nisha, you being from Bangalore, this is known to be one of the Silicon Valley for India. So we, we And is quite good, and people appreciate Bangalore for that. Uh, the ICT in general plays a very good role in in terms of making our life better. If we talk about the mobile phones, I remember the days when we used to dial up, we used to queue up to call our homes from another any other city. Now you can do it anytime when you are traveling. Although I think we should not talk when you are driving, but while you are traveling or standing or waiting for any of the public transport to come, we can talk. So ICT is going to play a very also as a part of the smart city. If we know about what's happening uh, a kilometer ahead or a two kilometer ahead, we can take a better decision in terms of driving. If we know whether we are going to get a electricity, water or anything next one hour or so, we can align our activities, day-to-day -day activities even. So I think better use and conscious use of ICT in a in a in an area which can lead you to the resource conservation as well as improving and saving our time is a good perspective or we should go ahead with that one. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, right, sir. Uh, there is a user from Chennai. Uh, his name is Benny. He's asking, can we use a proper waste management system in Chennai to keep the city clean? Is there any innovative technology used for it? Chennai, yeah. Uh, Chennai, actually, I think few years back, I remember it, it had a very good, or it, it was a more, almost like a one of the case where people, which people used to talk about in other cities, 
to fall back and look for their sustainable, or you can not exactly sustainable, but at least very efficient waste management system. I'm not sure about what has happened today or do we require much upscaling of that particular uh, model. There are good models exist in Chennai itself. Uh, but as, as I mentioned that waste management is such a activity that it, it becomes problematic if it is not solved at a household and neighborhood level. If it is not managed at household and neighborhood level, once it gets collected at a city level, it becomes a very, very difficult in terms of the technology and also in terms of the volume. And for what? We are investing a huge amount of crores of rupees in managing the waste, which can be solved at a neighborhood level. And technologies are there. For example, there's a uh, organic waste converter, which can, which can be installed at a decentralized manner in a cities and ward level, and which can convert organic waste into the manure. And the same manure can be used in a small parks and gardens. So there are sustainable or you can say local solutions are possible. But if get collected in the tons of the waste together at a city level, it becomes difficult. So I would say ICT can play a good role. Similarly, for example, tracking that. What is the present stage of uh, particular transport, uh, transportation or logistics of the waste? That can be tracked using the uh, ICT technology. It can be also... Uh, uh, promote a feedback that sitting at a home you can also send a send a information to the city government that your waste has not been collected or in your colony the waste has not been collected for a couple of days and this that can be cleaned up and your so queries can be addressed quickly so there are a lot of applications which are possible using the ICT to manage the waste thank you uh, Right. Next. Right, sir. Sir, actually, uh, waste management is a quite a problem, uh, which is one of the key is issues that many Indian, you know, cities face today. Uh, how do you think this problem really can be solved through smart city mission, uh, and how can the citizen help in it? Uh, in time and again, I will say yes. There are two, three key points that if we see that smart city solutions or the perspective which has emerged. Waste management emerged as a, or solid waste management is basically emerged as a one of the very, very uh, crucial or very, very big issue as such. Second point is, as I mentioned in a previous discussion or just a previous question, is also the issue gets escalated or enlarged at a city level. Solution lies at a local level. Solutions are difficult to implement at a city level. And if we implement at a city level, it requires enormous cost. It requires a huge uh, uh, logistics and also requires a quite big effort. If it is managed at a local level, it can be managed very, very comfortably with the engagement of the citizens as a municipal corporation. That there are some good examples, like in Pune, people are doing, or some other places, also people are carrying it out. Yeah? Right. Right. Uh, sir, actually we would, we've talked about smart cities, uh, you know, these days, but uh, do you think that emphasizes should be there on the green building development also? There's, it's a query from uh, one of the user also, uh, Renu. Uh, so do you think that green building should also, you know, come, uh, will really help in terms of all these things? Uh, if we see green building as a, uh, as a concept, a green building concept need uh, need a kind of uh, uh, kind of seen from the two different perspectives. One of the perspective is making the environment and the general conditions green. Second second kind of perspective is to optimize the energy. If I see from the second point of view, optimizing the energy, the main issue lies not in the uh, not in the kind of building which we are individually build individually have, or we have a traditional kind of housing. Our per capita energy use is quite low. However, if we look into the modern building with a glass facade, with a wrong orientation in a city, which is bringing a lot of heat and light inside, and then a lot of ACs are being put up. So these kind of places where actually green building can help us to optimize the energy use, as well as in terms of doing some kind of use of the sustainable building materials. That's what is a green building talks about. In other condition, in terms of cleaning of the, of the environment, whether it is big building, commercial building, or a small house, both need to be uh, focused and both need to work at a same with the same perspective. There cannot be a very different perspective at the two stage. However, green building as a part of the smart city may contribute to the very, very uh, small part of that. Because uh, despite all effort which has gone in last one decade, uh, and what I can see in next one decade as well, this is not going to uh, 
escalate more than double or triple in terms of the million uh, square meter of it under the green building carpet area. So I don't see it will grow like that much, although there are projections which can tell me the right statistic. I don't have those statistics in front of me, but they will be a very small component as an overall smart city concept. Right, right. So uh, there's a query from Saurabh. He is saying that we have heard of end users getting benefit uh, from carbon credit from green buildings, green projects. Can you please elaborate on this? Uh, yeah, the question by the Saurabh is actually is very, you can say, important. In a context of the recent discussion which has happened in Paris on the climate change, uh, However, after the Paris discussion, we are still trying to find out what is a kind of incentive and disincentive for the emitting the carbons. Uh, while we look into the projects, like for example, uh, urban projects or green building projects or any, any infrastructure projects, the, the carbon credits which are being earned actually is a kind of bonus, if you say. It's like a extra income or like an incentive, a, a project can get it. The main benefit which comes from implementing this kind of strategies or you can say emission reduction strategies is in terms of saving your electricity bill, saving the energy and also in terms of using the material and getting benefit in terms of clean environment. So these are the benefits which actually are realizable, which we can feel around. In terms of the carbon credit, they are kind of additional as well as uh, kind of bonus to these particular projects. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, sir, from, right. Sir, this Rama from uh, Rama, a, a user, she yeah. is asking, what yeah, about yeah. the maintain? What about the maintenance of greenhouse technology? Do we have enough expertise or resources available with major cities? Uh, it's not a bit clear. Greenhouse technologies means. Uh, is it talking about the greenhouses or is it, does it, talk, they are talking about the uh, green building or something like that? Yes, a green building specifically. Green building, yeah. Uh, I think green building maintenance and operation is not major issue because once the building is constructed using the good material, right orientation and optimized use of the energy, maintenance will be not very difficult except in some of the cases where we require a very specific control systems. Even in those cases, we do have expertise and uh, it is not, uh, I think, uh, out of scope to mention that India today has, can bring any technology which can be bankable or which can be proven that it, it is giving a net benefit after a certain recovery period. So any technology is possible to implement if it is, yeah, it, it is able to give its cost back to the consumer. So that way I think operation maintenance is not going to be a major issue uh, in green building specifically. Other projects, for example, if there is right. an industrial projects of energy recovery, they may require uh, higher, you can say, or they may require higher expertise, but all this expertise we have, it exists in Indian engineers. Right. right. So let's, uh, coming back to the smart city uh, point, we are, we are getting many queries in terms of that. Uh, there's a user called Lavanya, she's asking, uh, what will be the major role play of citizens who live in slums? How will their life become better when we talk about smart cities? Uh, look, there are two, three things. If we see smart city as a uh, project, I have already mentioned in my presentation that yes, I agree that to some extent we have missed out consulting them. So probably some of the benefit which could have been passed on to them uh, with this kind of program we may, I think, have to relook while the smart city plans are being prepared or the it is being implemented. So that is one. However, if we see uh, in terms of the slum dweller, what they are looking for in general, they are looking for two or three different things. First thing, what they are looking for, uh, their livability, not livability, livelihood, sorry. They are looking for their livelihood because they are earning a, such a meager amount you know, on a daily basis because, and hence they cannot take up any travel, they cannot take up such a, uh, and believe me that dead time is more precious, for example, because if they travel for an hour and they are being paid on hourly basis, they are not spending time on the uh, travel, they are also losing their hourly pay. 
but as compared to others right. who are whether whether we are coming an hour late or early i am being paid same salary so for them transportation is not only the cost of transportation it is also costing their time although they don't they don't have any control on that so if we have a efficient system where we are able to travel much faster much quickly probably i think that will help them to outreach to the better opportunity or opportunity which exists in the other part of the city other side of the city so i see it a positive direction yes there may be a additional cost on that and we have to find out how the cost subsidy can be brought in how we can subsidize this slum dwellers in terms of giving the monthly passes or something which already are there most of the public systems have the pass system so that can be accommodated second thing what is uh, so what our uh, you can say slum dwellers or you can say those who are in a low income group are looking for is a good hygienic condition around them so either as a part of the identified area or pilot project if they are part of that then i think we expect that their environmental condition and built environment is going to improve a lot and they that will become a showcase for the other areas to adopt it that is one second part is there if the resources consumption as a city as a whole goes down for example water which is available around 100 to 120 lpcd in general in a city in spite of that is some dollars are not getting water so if other well off part of the city is consuming less water this water which has been saved from them can be easily passed on to the slum dwellers so that way some of the services will be better uh, you can say delivered to the slum dwellers so i see services and these benefits are passed on to them as quickly as possible right uh there's a query from sanjana from gurgaon she is asking how important yeah, is yeah. the solar energy so can you hear me yeah hello let me repeat hello. let let me repeat the query for you sir how yeah. important is the solar energy to meet the electricity demand of smart cities what initiatives will be taken uh, to ensure yeah. good, power good question of private Uh, so let yeah. me complete the query. What initiative? Uh, if I see, for example, in general, I'm not having the part. statistics. I maybe uh, you can say not exact, uh, but roughly, if I see the statistics, countrywide we have very less, uh, you can say, component and composition coming from the renewable energy. Yes. Neha, Pushpa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I think you lost connection with Ashwini. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello, can you Mr. listen? Mr. Kumar, are you there? Yeah, yes, I, I can listen to you, sir. But please just complete your answer, sir. Now, as a part of solar solar uh, city program, it is envisaged somewhere around the 20 percent of the cities need, if it can be met by the solar or any other another renewable source it will be good uh, this is a good vision as such uh, but at, for using the solar there are two ways we can use the solar energy one way is to use it directly and second second is use it and convert it into the electricity form although direct use of the solar energy in form of the solar cooker or something like that we have tested long back and actually they have not picked up probably if under the smart city program they are picked up again it will be good second part of the thing converting into the electricity and using it there is a lot of lot of uh, what is say that lot of lost happen when one type of the energy is converted into another type of energy for example the solar chips which we are using in the, in general can convert only something like a 18 to 20 25% of the solar energy which is falling on them so that is the rest of the 60 75% energy is not being used now once it is also tra translated and communicated through the grid they will be again you can say there is a there is going to be some loss over the transmission so likewise by the time it reaches to your home it will be hardly i think around 15% or 12% of the solar energy which has fallen onto the solar uh, chips but it doesn't mean this are not possible if you are installing solar solar cook solar heaters for the for the region where cold climate is there and people are using the hot water so we will be able to conserve and save lot of energy directly and it's not only the energy saving it's also money saved 
energy save is money save. So I see that right. not as part of the smart city, but as a using kind of different lifestyle uh, related to the energy consumption that may help us a lot. At least the smart city can generate that kind of interest among our citizens to adopt the renewable energy in every walk of the life. Right. Uh, so we are getting a lot of queries uh, now, but we, I think we are short of time. Yeah. I'll just take up a last query with you and uh, then you can just, uh, you know, conclude uh, the session with your remarks. Uh, the last query is uh, from uh, basically Asim. He is asking what all should be kept in mind and why buying a home in a smart city? Are there any guidelines fixed yeah. for uh, such homes? I could not I could not get a question. There was some disturbance. Can you repeat it? What all what all should be kept in mind while buying home in a smart city? Are there any guidelines while buying what? While, while buying a buying? home in a smart city. A home in a smart city. Wow. <laughs> it's like a <laughs> It's like a firstly, I think once we're looking into the, uh, uh, if you see a smart city, the way or you can say the way we have also envisaged, if it is a smart city, only uh, you don't have to, and if it has been implemented rightly, then you don't have to worry about several of the things which actually we are looking into the other other cases while we are. Or we see whether this place has a social infrastructure around or not. We see a lot of garden and open spaces are there or not. So we see a lot of things in natural or you can say uh, in houses which we are going to buy. The, the way this whole uh, smart city concept has been packaged actually already accommodate these concerns. And if there is an area identified and uh, retrofitted with this kind of solutions, probably that will have a better living environment in general. The, hence the quality of life will be better. Maybe I think uh, that will be the plus point about uh, taking quick decision and you can say right decision buying in, buying the place and a, and a home in a smart city. Yes, but it will go into cost more because it, because it is uh, involves a lot of infrastructure. It involves a lot of ICT there. Yeah. Similarly, the safety issue. There are a lot of cases now emerging of petty or petty cases or you can say serious cases where a person has to keep in mind uh, while buying the home. So this this use of ICT in a smart city will help us to increase the safety as well. So I see that there's a lot of positive thing and uh, that will happen while people are buying the home in a smart city. Right, right, sir. Uh, I would like to uh, take your concluding remarks in terms of you know citizen participation uh, in environment and uh, uh, policy planning in smart cities. Uh, your message to the consumer, sir. Uh, what I will say as a as a consumer, or even if you look at the last query, which has uh, made it uh, you can say more appropriately that what a consumer should look into that smart city concept as a deliverable or something which they can see. First thing is this smart city are not, you can say, uh, not adopting or taking whole city as a whole, except one or two aspects. So one city can look into putting whole, uh, whole part of the city is most efficient water supply system, 24 by 7, for example. Another city can choose the, any other option that is there. But what is going to happen as a part of this smart city concept, every city or active city will have some demonstrative project, some demonstrative showcase project, where which can which can establish a standard, which can establish the way the future townships and future development has to take place. So this is going to do in next five five six years. It is just going to trigger the concept, and it is going to trigger a showcase pilot cases in each of the city where we can decide this is what is the quality of life and this is what is the prices people are asking in smart city. Hence, the other part of the city also will feel competition and they will need to improve. Other developers which are not falling part of the smart city area, they may be falling outside of that, they also have to compete. So I think overall if we see this, this smart city is going to have a very good impact on the uh, built environment and service services available, uh, managing the waste and creating a kind of much livable environment at 
right cost. I will, I'm not sure about whether cost will increase and decrease because real estate market as such is passing through the recession uh, period now. But I can say that it will be a quite reasonable cost on which in future the consumers are going to get a better environment and facility. However, on the other side, citizens' participation is not only asking for a kind of infrastructure or having a creating a wish list. It is two-way interaction. The citizens have to participate not only in preparing the wish list or creating the infrastructure. They have to participate also in operation, maintenance, implementation, as well as long-term sustainability of the infrastructure, uh, as well as services or their environment as a whole. So th this is this is what the smart city concept probably should forge. They should forge not only the citizen participation, the poll or creating a vision. They should and they should bring out citizens group. They should able to institutionalize and formalize citizens group all over the places. Maybe at a ward wise or maybe with any other special or you can say target group based units. So that I think will be the one uh, step further in terms of creating sustainability in our city with the engagement of the citizens. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, as Mr. Kumar. Uh, I would I would like to thank to Magic Brick again and a special thanks to the Neha and also Pushpa for coordinating and bringing our discussion live and also thank to all the participants who have participated and who asked a very very relevant question and I hope I could able to answer my email is also there in the presentation in future also if you have any query please get back to me I will be happy to answer to your question. Thanks yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. As uh, as Mr. Kumar rightly said that consumer need not only have to uh, think about implementation, they also have to work towards the sustainability as well. Uh, and for uh, to take the smart cities actually taking a shape, uh, the, the weight is going to be there for about three to five years. Now let's see how does it shape. It's really going going to shape up. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Kumar, we are still receiving the queries. We will take with you uh, off the record. Thank you for yes, coming on the board. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pushpa. Thank you. Thanks a lot to everybody. Yeah. Thank you for the insightful presentation, Mr. Kumar. I'm really thankful to our guest speaker for conducting this webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all the participants for the support in making this webinar a great success. The recording of the webinar will be available on the Magic Mix website by tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.